another episode of Off the Clock. I'm obviously not in my studio. I am back with Lucas here at T-Rex Arms. We're gonna do another video. Today we're gonna talk about body armor because people are worried about crime, worried about self-defense. We're obviously worried about the things that are going on in other countries, foreign affairs, and people wanna know about this. So I'm gonna throw it over to you. Yeah, so there's a couple things about body armor in particular. So as the gun community, and this is something that I found interesting, journalists have started to reach out. They've started to recognize that the gun community isn't just buying guns. They're also now interested in buying this stuff. They're interested in buying body armor, helmets, night vision, and other equipment like that. The firearms industry is evolving. People are starting to recognize that the Second Amendment isn't just about hunting. It's not just about Bambi. It could be about something far worse than, say, home defense. And they realize that just owning a rifle might not be enough. And whenever we have world events such as uh, the very peaceful time of uh, 2020 was actually a, a, a great time for people to recognize the need mostly for owning, peaceful. mostly peaceful, uh, to recognize the need for having body armor to complement their rifle. We sell body armor and we saw a huge uptick in body armor sales and new people coming by our website, emailing us going, stuff's going down, I need equipment for it, what do I buy? So one of the biggest differences in shooting when it comes to wearing body armor or plate carriers is sometimes the plate, because you're wearing it nice and high to protect your vitals, can sometimes get in the way of the stock. But the main thing we're looking for is having that really good stock placement, nice and firm in our shoulder pocket. It might be touching the plate carrier just a little bit or the plate. So this rifle that we've got right here is a uh, Mark 18, or also kind of known as a CQBR. So this is um, the short version of the rifle that gets issued to uh, US Special Operations. So we're gonna be using that, and it's got the laser, light, red dot uh, combo. So if you wanna go ahead and sling up, mm -hmm. we'll go ahead and get shooting. Is it over here and then this way? Yep, so usually, yep, just like that. that. Okay. It's almost like she's done this before. Nice, one more time. Looks really good, stand by. It's good, it's like I want to bring it in closer. I think it's actually like wearing yep. this is better training in a way because yeah. it's forcing me to, you know, square up more and know where I'm putting it. Yep. Because I think without this, it's easier to slide around. So yep. this is actually a good buffer. Yep, you're yeah. having to really roll, really roll the shoulder into the stock. And by rolling the shoulder in, it also helps prevent the gun from kind of pushing out. Because yeah. if you start shooting sort of at this angle right here, it's really easy to let the gun trail off mm -hmm. versus no, I actually want to trap the stock so that it's only coming backwards, so the yeah. gun's not running off to the side. So soft armor typically stops pistol rounds and fragmentation from certain explosives at certain distances. And then you have hard plates, kind of Call of Duty-esque. Um, these will defeat uh, various rifle calibers based on the make of the plate, the thickness, the material, and whatnot. So typically speaking, this is what people are interested in buying because they realize, whoa, a lot of people have rifles. It's not just handguns. I need something else. And when you go and buy a hard rifle plate, such as this one, the HESCO uh, L210, you will need some sort of vest or carrier, it's called a plate carrier, to actually have that armor plate inside. And there's tons of variations and types of plate carriers out there. This is one that we manufacture, the AC-1. It's a slick minimalist carrier that you can wear um, under a jacket, you can wear under a hoodie for, depending on how peaceful uh, the, the time is that you need armor. And then if you wanna build it out a little bit more overt, have some magazines to go with it, have your medical equipment, your radio, your communications, you can do that and sort of flex it between both of those roles. Um, but basically the way it works is there is a plate pocket um, on each side of the carrier that you could drop your plate into, sized accordingly to that plate carrier, and then you're ready to go, throw that on, size it to your body and you're set. So soft armor for pistol rounds, kind of a simple way to look at it. Rifle plates, hard plates for your rifle calibers. Moving down here, uh, these are a couple military style, military issue plate carriers, just for some examples. Um, this is the Cry JPC. It's sort of a, kind of a slick, kind of similar in size to the AC-1, but you can kind of put some more stuff on it, which nice. is nice. And this actually has side plates. If you want more protection, this is a, uh, a 3A side panel soft plate that can go on the side here. And the thing about armor that a lot of folks, um, you know, they, they look at a plate like this and they go, oh, this thing's tiny. 
you need to protect more of your body. Well, the purpose for body armor is just to protect your vitals. You're just wearing it over your lungs and your heart. You're not trying to protect your stomach. If you have a long torso, they don't make long armor. You don't size armor lengthwise, you size it widthwise. So you're never going to actually protect your entire body. by concerned citizens and whether or not you decide to invest in any of this or not, this is all information that I think is important to know, especially as the world is getting increasingly crazy. Uh, and it's just good to be educated, so mm -hmm. I'm happy to have him here. And there is one misconception. A lot of people, when they look at this, they go, why would I want this for home defense? And the answer is, you're right. You're probably not going to put on body armor at 3 a.m. when someone's breaking through your door. You're not going to have time necessarily to put on all your kit. You know, turn off all lights in the house, put on night vision. It's not for home defense per se. It's more for, again, those scenarios that are in some ways a little trickier, a little more difficult, uh, a little more difficult to make decisions on, you know, like the what was going on in 2020. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit more proactive in wearing that equipment. It's not something you necessarily use for home defense. And that's where there's a lot of misconception about body armor. People who only focus on home defense, they probably don't need body armor. Yeah. It's for people that want to be prepared for those other scenarios outside of just the home defense or carrying a pistol when they go out in public. That's what the body armor or night vision or helmets are for. It's for something, um, honestly, uh, that could become much worse. Yeah. Like if you live in Portland, per se, that, that could be. Exactly. was super fun. Lucas, thank you for having me back out Absolutely. here again. Thanks for coming. I hope you guys learned a little bit about body armor, that it doesn't seem so intimidating, and I hope you enjoyed some of those cool action shots, which are my very favorite thing about doing this. I'm sure we'll be back doing another video oh, so. soon, so I will see you guys later. Before you go, make sure that you like this video if you have not already. Subscribe to this channel and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a single comment section or off-the-clock episode. We are putting out new content every day, sometimes twice a day, and even on weekends now, and I don't want you to miss a thing.